Hello everyone. Here I go ahead and do a quick little description here with my DCC upgrade with this layout. Um, for those of you guys who have not watched my videos, um, I was running and planning on doing this layout with DC um, with multiple cabs. I was looking at running seven cabs on the layout to be able to control the whole thing. And um, decided to make the big change to go ahead and go with DCC. I've decided to go ahead and go with the Digitrax DCC system. And um, well, here it goes. The home wiring on my original, what I did was, is I had all my common rail wires. Each one of these wires right here goes to a feeder wire on the layout. And then these wires over here originally went into a double pull, double throw turn out, or double pull, double throw switch. And um, that would allow me to go ahead and choose between cab A or cab B or so forth and so on. Well, the more cabs you have, the more wiring you have to go ahead and run to be able to switch back and forth between different cabs and stuff. So all I had to do was to go ahead and be that I ran with home wiring, all I had to do was just go ahead and cut all my positive feeder wires coming down from my rails, disconnect them all from, the, from my double pull, double throw switches, and ran them all up here inside this block coming through here. Um, these blocks I actually I picked up off of eBay. I only paid uh, it was a buck and a half a piece for them. I like them because they're really nice. They have a uh, protective cover on them. It's clear. They're all numbered 1 through 12. So you have a 1 through 12 top and bottom. And what I have actually done was I actually made up a list as far as what each wire goes to for each side and try to keep them all the same for the feeder wires. And then I have my positive, one wire that comes in off the Digitrax coming across on the top of each one. And I just took a, a solid core piece of wire and actually wrapped them going all the way around through each one. So my two wires right here, which is my white and my yellow, come back down and they go inside my Digitrax which are here where am I? right here and right here this one and this one both go to my programming tracks these two here are for my power input for the Digitracks so then I ran it all up over here here's my power that comes in and runs on around the layout and I got my programming wires and my track feeder wires which come right up over to here for the programming. Um, this here is a Digitrax AR1. I was looking at Circuitron. Circuitron is a little bit more expensive. It's almost ten dollars difference. So I priced them all up between NCE and a bunch of other uh, companies that make an auto reverser. Um, Digitrax is by far the cheapest. They're all the same. Um, so this one here is wired up for my branch line on this one. and. Um, what it actually does is I have a couple of wires that go up over there to my salt end of my layout and that go inside of a whole other section which are here and here. They run around my layout over to another section of these to go ahead and supply. This way here if I have a short or anything I can go ahead and easily diagnose it. This was actually the center point for my AR1 and then the feeder wires come out for that and go right up to the rails. Um, over here, my uh, my grandpa picked up a, uh, a power supply. This is a 12-volt, uh, 6-amp power supply. I do not know exactly where he got it from. Um, it was a really good deal on it. So, uh, turned around, used it. I went ahead and tested it all first. Um, had to make my own wire connections that come up into it. Basically looks like a computer power supply. Does not need a fan or anything. It runs nice and cool. Never gets hot. So everything stays cool up underneath the layout, which helps out with the uh, the Digitrax command station. Then down over here, if you can see here, I got a, a series of four Digitrax DS64s. These here, or three of them, excuse me. These here all run my hidden stuff. I do have to go ahead and get some more of these. They'll run up for all my hidden staging and uh, hidden loops and everything else, my crossovers and stuff. 
Um, one thing that you guys probably don't know about, or maybe you do already know about, is that on these DS64s, they, they've got multiple functions on them. Now these ones here actually operate with a snap switch. And what I've actually done to go ahead and test them all out, this is just for another one that comes up in here. What I've actually done is wired up a push button and I'll be running push buttons on the front part of the layout. These are already programmed. So once I run a push button, the front part of the layout, I can actually control them manually. Um, in order to do that, you actually have to hook up inside your common, which is right up here right next to your, your positive feed coming up into your DS64. And then the other one comes down over here to the S inputs. You have S1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, it starts off with A's. It goes A, S, A, S, A, S, so forth and so on between 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this right here in really quick. I just started doing this because I haven't, uh, haven't tested it out yet. Um, with these push buttons, you can actually be able to test them out. And you only need one button to be able to control this with the DS64 and it will throw both directions. You don't have to worry about um, having a double pull, double throw on here or anything. Um, this will also work with other turnouts as well, such as Circuitron or anything else. Now I have this little push button set up. Once again, it goes to your common on the DS64, down to your S input, not your A. It only goes down to S. And if I take and if I push this, you can actually hear the turn off, turn, back and forth. Now if I turn it on or if I go up above, onto my layout, this is one of my hidden areas. You can actually see it snapping back and forth. This right here is one of the turnoffs to take off for my branch line. Now all I'm doing is just pressing the button. If I take it, if I press it a whole bunch of times, it'll keep on turning until it's all caught up. So there it is. Now I think I pretty much got the layout wired up. I just got some um, some decoders put in, so I have a couple of my units. I'm going to work with a little bit of computer programming here. Um, I sought to go ahead and get some BDL 168s, some block occupancy detectors, which will also be wired up into the DS64s as well. Um, that's why I haven't gone too far here with my wiring. So when this is all said and done, I can go ahead and be able to have my block occupancy, especially inside of all my hidden staging areas. So I got plenty of room here on my panel for everything. I got plenty of power. This right here will actually power supply power for everything more than enough. And um, I actually took and made this right here on a foldable piece. So I can actually take and fold the whole thing down. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I just took it and I put this up on a piano hinge coming across. I made sure that I ran a stranded wires coming from all my supplies down below. I covered them all to help with chafing or anything else. Ran them through, through the layout. I connected them all so I got good connectors on everything to go ahead and hold on the wires. That helps everything to prevent it all from moving. My hidden stuff you'll never see these wires right here don't move, so I'm able to run all solid core for everything on everything else. Um, I'm going to do another video and um, show you guys how to be able to program a DS64. And uh, we'll take it from there. Now, these are all hooked up through local net. I do have to go ahead and make some cables. I just purchased these right here up off of eBay. I only pay like 10 bucks for four of these cables for right now. Um, as soon as I get the funding, I'll go ahead and I'll actually 
um, make my own cables, shorten them up, make it look a lot nicer up inside of here. So it's going to be a lot easier for diagnosing and being able to go ahead and trace all these wires back and forth and know right where they all go. Um, what I've also done is taken made a list as far as which set of wires go where on my DS6 on my DS64, and at the same time I'll take and I'll make up a little card indicator and write down the actual um, programming number for each turnout and what they're assigned to for DCC. Um, I actually start off my numbers with 101. I'll go 101 through 112 on this right here so far. Um, I start off with a higher number because all these, everything that you program um, for the DS64, the, the switch addresses are starting off at 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when you go ahead and plug them in, I don't have to worry about starting it off as turnout number 1 or so forth and so on because it's just going to go and confuse the system. So that's what I've done here. Um, I'll do up another video as far as how to go ahead and be able to program these and show you guys how those right there work for the programming. Um, once I go ahead and get some computer functions here working, I will show you guys how to go ahead and run some computer functions and show you guys how to save some files and stuff using a JMRI program. Um, I don't think I'll be using JMRI. Uh, I have found a couple other ones. That I think might work. I'm just before I go out and get something or start downloading, I want to go ahead and do a little bit more research and read some more directions and figure out which one's going to work best for me and my layout. Um, this is just how I do things. Um, please feel free to comment or uh, leave a message, good or bad. It's the only way we all learn. Um, once again, this is just the way I do it, and um, I hope you guys all enjoy. And it, hopefully here it won't be too long and we'll do another update and we'll try running a train going around the layout and take it from there. Thanks again for watching on uh, the Fallen Flags Model Railroad and the, uh, the DCC upgrade with the uh, Digitrax DS64. Um, once again, if you guys have any questions or anything, please feel free to leave me a comment or a question. I'll be more than happy to answer or even do another video if you guys need some additional information. Um, wherever you guys do, uh, test twice, solder once. Um, it's a lot easier to go ahead and test twice. So far I've been able to hook everything up with no problems. Everything's been pretty much all plug and play so far. So, knock on wood. Thanks again for watching and you guys have a great day.